In this lecture, I'll compare the characteristics of SAN and NAS storage and explain the differences between the two. Let's start with NAS, which stands for Network Attached Storage. Now, if anybody asks you to define SAN and NAS storage, NAS gives you file level access to the storage and SAN gives you block level access to the storage. That probably doesn't make much sense now, but by the end of this lecture, you'll understand the difference between the two. So NAS is file level access. And when you're using NAS, the management of the file system resides with the remote storage system, not with the client which is using it. A really common scenario with NAS you've probably seen before is when you're using your PC at work, you're probably running Windows on there and you've, you're probably used to accessing Windows file servers. So let's have a look at how that works. And that is an example of NAS. You are getting file level access to the storage. So let's have a look to see what I mean. So I have already set up a Windows file share on my storage system and I'm gonna to connect to it from my client here. So this is just like connecting to NAS storage from your PC at work. So I will right click on this PC and choose map network drive. And then I'll specify the location of the share that I am connecting to. And the name of the storage system is storage, not very imaginative and the name of the share is finance. So I'll click in there and then it's asking me to enter credentials because I'm not already logged in. So I'll put in a valid username and password and then you can see, there we go. It has mapped that storage as my Z drive now. And if I click in here, you can see the different folders in there. If I go into one of the folders, I can see the files that are already there. And if I wanted to, I could create a new file in there myself as long as I've got permission to do so. So you see with file level access, the file system is already set up on the remote storage system. I didn't have to format the storage to be able to use it. Okay, so that is our NAS file level access. Going back to the slides again, NAS typically uses the existing data network infrastructure, meaning it doesn't have its own separate dedicated network. So again, imagine this is you at work. Here's you on your client PC at your desk up at the top here. You're gonna be accessing the other servers that are within your company. For example, a web server down here. You're also gonna be accessing the internet over this network as well and the storage system is going to be added to this existing network infrastructure. So you can see our servers will typically have redundant connections to two switches, just to give them a bit of added resiliency. We're gonna have that on the storage system as well. So you can see it's connected to the existing network and your client accesses it over there. You do not need to put in separate dedicated network. Okay, so that was NAS. Looking at SAN now, SAN stands for Storage Area Network. NAS provides file level access, SAN provides block level access to the storage. So the client manages its allocated space on the storage system the same as if it was managing a local hard drive. So imagine that you've bought a new hard drive for your PC and you fit the hard drive into the PC your PC gets low level block level access to the disk. And when you're using SAN, even though the hard drive is not in the same chassis as your PC or as your server, it's remote over a network, it's just like you've added a hard drive directly to the server. So the management of the file system resides with the client using the storage. So let's have a look at how that works. So for SAN storage, that will typically be servers that are using the SAN storage. So on my storage system, I've already set up some SAN storage for the server that I'm on here. 
And if I go to my, my file and storage services and then disks, so just like if you'd added a hard drive into this actual server here, I go in here and there I can see there is my SAN storage that I have added for this server. It's a lab environment, so I've made it really small, 500 megabytes, real world, it would normally be quite a bit bigger than that. So I can see that the disk is offline right now. This is the same as what I would see if I'd added a hard drive directly to the system. So I'm going to right click on it and bring it online and then click on yes. And then once it's online, I can right click and I'm going to create a new volume. I'll click on next here and then I'm going to do it on disk one, the 500 megabyte disk. It's on my SAN storage. Click on next. It's going to tell me it's going to bring it online. I say OK to that. I'll make it the maximum size of the storage that the server was allocated. I select a drive letter here, which is the next available, I think, which is E. I'll click on next again. And now you see it's going to ask me the file system that I want to format the storage with. So when you're using SAN storage, you've got that low level block level access to the storage, just like it's accessing its own local hard drive and the client formats the, the storage and it's got yeah really low level access to it okay so i click on next here and then create and it will just take a little bit of time to initialize and format that storage now i can click on close and now if i go into windows explorer on my server there was the, the local desk already in the server and there I can see there's my new volume, my E drive, which is that SAN storage that I just set up on the client side. Later on in the course, I'm going to show you how to set it up on the storage system side as well. But for now, I just wa wanted to explain the difference between NAS and SAN storage, how it looks like from the client's point of view. Okay, going back to the slides again. So with your NAS storage, that usually uses the same existing network. With SAN storage, traditionally, it has got a separate dedicated storage network infrastructure, separate from your normal local area network. So you can see with the example here, again, like I said earlier, SAN storage is usually used for servers. So in the example, here's your PC at desk at your desk and you're going to access that web server which was within your company so you at your desk you're going to access the web server over the normal company network but then let's say that the web pages are stored on the SAN storage so the web server needs to access that over the SAN network so for that we have a separate dedicated network which is just used for the SAN storage the the layer one media will be copper like ethernet or fiber and you can see again for resiliency we'll normally have redundant connections between the server and the storage system so when we put it together it looks like this here's you on your pc at your desk you connect to the web server over the normal network infrastructure and then to actually serve you the web pages, the web server gets that from its storage, which is over the storage area network. Okay, a characteristic of SAN is you can boot from SAN. As SAN provides that low level block level access, which appears the same as if you'd installed a hard drive into the server chassis, it's possible to boot from SAN, just like it was booting from its own local hard drive. Where boot from SAN is deployed, it's possible to have diskless servers. Because it can use storage space in the SAN, just like a local hard drive, it doesn't need to have its own local hard drive. So that can give you really good cost savings. Boot from SAN is called boot from SAN because it only works over SAN. There's no such thing as boot from NAS. Booting from NAS is, pos is not possible because it only gives you that file level access, doesn't give you the block level access. Okay, so let's look and see what the different pro actual protocols are that are used for SAN and NAS. Looking at NAS first. 
we've got SIFS SMB. SIFS stands for the Common Internet File System. SMB stands for Server Message Block. Now, these are actually slightly different, but they're pretty much used interchangeably as terms. SIFS is actually a flavor of SMB. Nowadays, if you're talking about them, we'll normally say SMB because there's newer versions of SMB. But if you're looking at documentation and you see SIFS or SMB, they are slightly different, but basically very similar to the same thing. The two terms can be used interchangeably. SIFS SMB is designed for Windows-based systems. The other NAS protocol that's available is NFS, which is the network file system, and that's designed for Unix and Linux systems. However, both Windows and Unix and Linux systems can use both of these different NAS types. I'll go into these protocols in more detail in the lectures coming up after this one. Our SAN protocols are FC, Fiber Channel, iSCSI, which is the Internet Small Computers Interface, FCOE, which is Fiber Channel over Ethernet, and the latest one is NVMEOF, which is Non-Volatile Memory Express over Fabrics. There's some debate as to whether that should be classed as a SAN protocol or not, but I'm listing it here because it does share most of the same characteristics. Uh, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go into these in more detail later as well, just to give you a quick overview of them. Fiber Channel runs over the Fiber Channel networks, iSCSI and FCOE run over Ethernet networks. And you know how I said earlier that there will normally be a separate dedicated network for your SAN? That was most almost always the case before when our network connections were maximum speed one gigabit, like one gigabit Ethernet. You couldn't, there wasn't enough bandwidth with one gigabit to run both your data and your storage traffic over the same links. But now we've got much faster connections, like 10 gigabit Ethernet, 40 gigabit Ethernet, 100 gigabit Ethernet. It's quite common to have 10 gigabit Ethernet network cards in your servers now. So it is actually more viable nowadays that you don't need that separate dedicated network for your SAN, you can run it over the same shared infrastructure, just like we did with NAS, as long as you've got enough bandwidth on your network there. So sometimes you'll see it over a shared infrastructure nowadays, but it is still common to see a separate dedicated network for SAN. Okay, last thing to tell you here. Back in the day, storage systems typically were either NAS or SAN storage systems. We were supported all or some of the SAN protocols, or we supported all or some of the NAS protocols. What you find nowadays is a lot of storage systems offer unified storage, meaning they offer both SAN and NAS. If you're using a storage system at work, then you'll choose the most suitable protocol for the particular workload or application. For example, if you've got SQL servers, maybe you'll use iSCSI SAN for the SQL database. And if you're using VMware virtualization, maybe you'll use NFS for your VMware data store. And you'll maybe use SMB for your users' home folders, for example. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this video useful, then you can click the link above my head now to get access to my complete introduction to SAN and NAS course. That's all for free. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get my latest tutorials.